Hey, it's me, Lazarus. You know that once was dead but brought back to life guy? It's me. <laughs> it's been amazing a little while. I got my hearing back first. Pretty pleased it wasn't the sense of smell, to be honest. That's when I heard him. Unbind him. Unbind him, said Jesus. And as they unbound me, I... So many questions. Like, why Lazarus? Why did Jesus take so long? What did I see? What's the other side? What's the point of it? What is the point of it? As I sit in front of you now, maybe that's the question when there's so many questions. What does it mean? What does the raising of Lazarus mean? It could be that you looking at me should ask yourself as I am right now, what do I do differently now? When it was all over, the grief, the sorrow, the pain, the trauma in my helpless sisters, Mary, Martha, that was apparent, but, but that I'm alive again? I've got a second chance. And now that I've got a second chance, I would do so much different than ever before. But the truth is you don't need me to be able to do that. Jesus doesn't need to do a miracle with Lazarus. Take Josephus, for example. That's old mate down the road. He's a solo charioteer. He was just doing some practice runs up there and in the Hebron Valley. Uh, yeah. And straight out of a juniper bush, left a mountain goat and whacked him sideways. Clear felled him. Slam straight onto the side of his head. We thought he was dead. His head swelled to the size of a bucket that you'd used to scoop water out of Jacob's well, but yeah, we nearly buried him. But he's back. He's back from the dead. <sighs> Saw him at the markets this morning, actually, singing in tune, joking. Not quite as funny, but. You can look at Josephus and see the delivery of another chance. And so you can ask yourself that question. If you had another chance, what would you do differently? So that's not what this is about. It might just be a straight up bald faced miracle. I was dead and now I'm alive. even though I'm going to die again. So what does that mean? You'll have heard the story of the girl walking along the beach that's been flooded with millions of starfish that are all about to die and she's throwing one back at a time and people ask what's the point in that and she holds up one starfish and says it matters to this one and throws it into the water and picks up another and it says it matters to this one and throws that back in the water so clearly it matters to me Lazarus my sisters and my friends and wider family but this thing with Jesus then that's that's not big enough that's not big enough it's good news for me. It needs to be good news for something bigger, for the whole of humanity. Otherwise, what's the point? I will die again. <laughs> oh. Thanks. It's uh, Mary and Martha. It won't be long. What? This? <laughs> Come on. It was Jesus' first miracle. That's a beauty. That's it.
I'm assigned. I'm assigned to the whole of humanity. That Jesus rules over death. But maybe more importantly, is ruler in life, for life. That's it. This is what I would do differently. This is what I see now. Life matters. Kindness matters. Forgiveness matters. The whole thing matters. And every morning when we wake up, that's the narrow door. Rise up and walk through the narrow door and work out every day our salvation every day. That's what this is a sign of. So in the business of every day, we choose life and choose Choose people over profit, community over before empire, corporation. Choose humanity over the systems and mechanisms of economy. Choose children, tomorrow's children, today's children over today's bonus. That's it. I'm a sign to humanity, the whole of humanity. Kindness matters. Forgiveness matters. Blissful Ah, the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blissful are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blissful are they that make peace, you that make peace. You are called children of God. Unbind it. Unbind it. Be set free. Be unbound and live each day. Jesus has come to set us free, to un unbind the whole of humanity for life. For life.